Hello, my name is Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and OnlineFirstAid.com and today I want to talk to you about defibrillators, AEDs, automated external defibrillators and why they save lives. Also, how easy they are to use. So, if somebody has a cardiac arrest in the community, their chances of survival um, are only about 6%. If you have a defibrillator to hand or you know where they are and can quickly get to one and you're able to put the pads on and apply the defibrillator um, and, and get it going within three minutes of that person being unconscious and not breathing, the odds jump from 6% to 74%. That is pretty amazing. Now, these things are so impressive that they are in the community. They are for you all to use. You do not need specific training, although obviously it makes it a lot easier if you know what to do. But it talks to you. So this is a real one. Call for help. Remove pads from package in back of unit. Apply pads to patient's bare chest as shown. The pads have Apply pads shown on them bare chest exactly shown. where to put them. Let me turn him off. But he actually takes you through the whole what to do. So you have to use a defibrillator in conjunction with doing good quality um, CPR. So CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So what you are doing when you're doing CPR is you're being a heart and lung machine. When you're pushing on the chest, you are being the heart for them because their heart is not working properly. This person is unconscious and not breathing normally, not breathing properly and not able to oxygenate their blood and pump it round to their heart and their brain. So when you are pushing hard and fast on the center of the chest and you're pushing between here and here, straight in the middle, two hands, elbows straight, and you're pushing down at a rate of two per second, like doing press ups on them. So when you are doing your compressions, you are being the heart for them and you are pumping the blood round the, round the coronary arteries to keep it full of oxygenated blood and you're pumping it to the brain. Now, after two or three minutes, you're going to run out of oxygenated blood. It's the nature of the beast. And so to top them up, you would do two breaths, um, like blowing into a balloon, hold the nose, open the airway and breathe into them. If you're unwilling or unable to do the breaths, you keep going with the compressions. You get somebody to get a defibrillator as quickly as you can and you get that defibrillator, you peel off the pads. Um, most of the defibs that you will find in stations and supermarkets and dentists will have um, the pads already connected, so you don't have to insert the pads. It will tell you what to do very clearly. So you put the pads, one on, the right, it looks like the wrong way round on here because my camera's the wrong way round, I haven't switched it. So you put one on their right shoulder, that's my right shoulder, and one on the left hand side, and you do the, um, the current will go across the heart. So I'm showing this the wrong way round because of the nature of the camera. But it shows you on the packet where to put them. I'm telling you for an adult, for a child, you would use, look at the pads, see what the directions are, and you would put one pad on the front of the chest and one pad on the back of the, of, on, on their back. Um, and again, you're giving the shock straight through. And for um, a baby or child, you would start with five breaths rather than 30 compressions to two breaths from the, um, from the start. So 30 compressions to two breaths for adults, five breaths first for a, for a child. Okay, so you're pushing down hard and fast, you're putting those pads on, um, you are pressing the shock button when it tells you to. You are standing well back before that when it's analyzing the heart rhythm. Now what it is doing is it's not, um, um, it's not giving a shock um, like um, jump starting a car, 
it's actually stopping the heart, like rebooting a computer. So the heart is not pumping properly, and so this machine stops the heart, so your backup system will kick it into the right rhythm. So you need to be careful about a couple of things. When it tells you analyzing heart rhythm, stand clear of casualty. It's so that nobody's knocking it and doing and, and could, could enable them to, to inadvertently diagnose a different rhythm. If it says shock advised, it will tell you press the orange button now. If it says no shock advised, it means it isn't in a shockable rhythm and you need to start doing CPR or continue with your CPR and it will tell you to do that. Don't keep stopping and starting and looking for a response. You keep going. You've called an ambulance, the paramedics are on their way and you keep doing CPR alongside the, the prompts that you will get from the defibrillator. Every two minutes, it will reanalyze the heart rhythm. If they were to start coming back, fantastic, but please don't start peeling off the pads and think, oh, we fixed them, because whatever caused them to go into cardiac arrest in the first place is still there. They need to go to hospital, they need to be sorted. So leave the pads in place. It will not let you give a shock whilst they are still with you because they're not in a shockable rhythm because it's not possible to be in a shockable rhythm and be talking to you. So leave the pads in place and once the paramedics arrive, they will tell you what to do and they will take over. So key thing to know, it is not possible to make things worse with a defibrillator. You cannot do things wrong. You cannot shock somebody who does not need a shock. So it will only let you give them a shock if that shock will be helpful. So do not worry about making things worse. Please realize how quick and easy it is to use. Know where defibrillators are um, on your journey to work. So just keep your eyes open. It's a green heart with a lightning flash across it as the sign. Know where they are and be ready to grab one if you find somebody who is unconscious and not breathing or if you suspect someone's having a heart attack, you discreetly bring it over to where they are. So do not be scared of these. Um, they save lives. Um, think of Fabrice Mwamba. He wouldn't be here along with many other people without one of these. These things are absolutely amazing and so easy to use. Hope that's been helpful. That's Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life.